Welcome back to another video in our Typo3 Editor tutorial series. Today, we will be talking about the dashboard and how to navigate and understand the page tree. If you haven't already, we recommend you watch our video, Logging In, Common Terms and Workflow, before watching this video. Let's begin. The two most common dashboard tabs you will use is the Page View found here and the File List tab found here. Another important tab to know is the User Settings tab found here. The dashboard is the menu on the left hand side. Please note that depending on your level of access that you may not see all the menu points that I currently have on this training site. You can minimize and expand both the dashboard and the page tree. To do this use the buttons at the top left of the page. Moving on, the page view. This is the view you will predominantly use to view the back end of your website. If we are in the page view and click on the home page, we can see what the page looks like in the back end. You can see that there are many content elements. They contain and govern how your website looks on the front end. There are many different types of content elements and we will discuss them in another video. Next, the file list. Here is where you store any images or documents that you may want to use on your website. We can see that we have a folder titled Images. We can also see that we have further sorted the contents into subfolders. In doing so, we have organized our images and documents so that we can easily navigate to the correct file. We can find our desired file without looking through one folder containing every single file on the site. It is a best practice to always organize your files in a similar manner. Lastly, we have the user settings. Here we can see our name and password and importantly link an email address so that we can recover our user should we forget the password. Once you have typed in your email address, a forgot your password link will appear on the login page. When you go to edit and advanced functions and scroll down, you can also edit the number of subpages that are copied when copying a page and enable or disable recursive delete. This is a very important setting. When enabled, you are able to delete a page and all containing subpages in two clicks. By default, this setting will be disabled. Let's go back to the page view. Here we can see the page tree. This is essentially a map of your entire website. It works similarly to Windows Explorer in that we have folders inside of folders, or in this case, pages inside of pages. Using the page tree, we are able to name menu points that are visible on the front end. Now, take note of the pages home and about. When we go to the front end, we can see that each of these pages appears as a menu point that users can click on and be taken to the relevant pages. The page tree is also how you navigate your site to find relevant pages to edit. Let's go over some of the icons that we can see in the page tree and talk about what they represent. Here we have the home page. You will notice that the icon for this page is a globe. This means that this page is the root page. A root page acts as the starting point of every website. All other pages are subpages to the root page. To put it into simple terms, it is the main folder that all your other pages are located in. Next, we have the shortcut. This is a page that links back to another page and does not have any content of its own. In this case, we have a shortcut back to the home page. Lastly, we have the standard page. This is what most of your pages will be. On both the home page, as well as any standard page, you are able to add and edit content elements that contain information that is displayed on the front end. This brings us to the end of this tutorial. Please consider subscribing to stay up to date with our weekly tutorials.